Hello, hi everyone. Welcome to Board Brahmastra. And this third session from the electricity chapter. So today we are going to learn about heating effect of electric current. So how many of you are present today? Say hi or say something or put your favorite emoji. I want to check what is like which is your favorite emoji. Just shoot out in the chat. I want to see. Okay, hi. Villain, hi Villain, Ashutosh, good evening, Kajal, good evening, No Brainer, good evening, Babu Sahib, nice, good evening, all right, great. So, uh, anyone who is new attending the series for the first time, so if anyone is new, this is about me, you can just have a look. Oh, yeah, there's your favorite emoji, nice. Hi, Relangi. Apparao, Afrit, nice, Sharma, Sharma, right? Sharma, hi everyone, great. So today we are going to learn about heating effect of electric current. But before that, let's understand what is electrical current or when let's suppose we use electricity, correct? In our houses, for example, there is a blackboard behind me. So I'm using, this is a digital board. So there are so many lights here. There's a camera in front of me. So all of these require energy. So what kind of energy it is? So what we use, it is not the electric current. We use the electrical energy. So do you know what is electrical energy? The energy that is produced at the power stations, like for example, hydropower or thermal power, what they produce, it is the electrical energy. It comes to our houses and we convert this electrical energy into different forms of energy. Mechanical, that means kinetic or potential, or light energy, sound energy, chemical energy, heat energy. These are the different forms of energy. We convert our electrical energy. So what is electrical energy? It is the most convenient form of energy. Most convenient, most easy to use, very safe to use and easy to convert. So, for example, electric vehicle. So, we convert the electrical energy into kinetic energy. When the vehicle is moving, we convert it into kinetic energy. Or, let's suppose there is a tank, water tank. So, there is a motor which pumps the water to certain height. So, we convert the electrical energy into potential energy. You have a doubt? Real flow, flow of electrons or just impact flows. Uh, it is a real flow. Okay, uh, Relangi, just give me a minute. I'll explain this. After that, I'll explain your question. Then there's a TV. So in TV, we convert electrical energy into light and sound. There's a battery or the cell. So we convert electrical energy into chemical energy. And oven. So here, we convert the electrical energy into heat energy. Okay, so now there's a question. So when we say current flows in the circuit, is it the electrons which are flowing or is it the impact? So what he is trying to say or ask, is it the energy that flows? So I'll tell you, let's suppose there is a power station. Let's suppose whichever, like wherever you live, there would be power station nearby, but that power station would be at least 100 kilometers, correct? From your house. So when the power is generated or when this electrical energy is produced, it will take some time to reach to your house. And do you know how fast it can travel? It travels this electrical energy. These are the electromagnetic waves. They travel at the same speed as speed of light. So when we say the current is flowing, we show the direction of current. So actually there are electrons which are vibrating, which are oscillating or they move, but the speed of electron is very slow. It is very, very, very slow. But the electrical energy or the energy that we use, it flows at the speed of light. So it is very fast. Understood now? So what we see, something is moving, something is flowing. So for example, these lights, they are on because of the electrical energy and that energy flows with the speed of light. The flow or the speed of electron is very slow. I hope this is clear. So now, when do we produce heat? So let's understand, for example, 
you see here candle is burning so what is there in the candle it is the chemical energy so we convert the chemical energy into heat in the candle correct then let's suppose you rub your hand everyone just rub your hand and what's what you see there's a friction so because of this friction there's a movement of the hands so there is a kinetic energy we convert that into heat correct then the third one for example the ball football if you just throw the football football will go down so the potential energy will get converted into kinetic energy and finally the football will settle on the ground so whatever the potential energy it has in the beginning all of it got converted into heat so these are the different ways you can convert one form of energy into heat but how do you convert electrical energy into heat so let's understand that so have you noticed these two things for example when you are charging your mobile it becomes very hot or let's suppose you are playing some video games do you guys play video games kis kis ko video games pasand hai yahan pe mujhe to bahut acche lagte hai i used to play lot and lots of video games even now if i get some time i still play do you know which is my favorite video game i used to play counter strike then i used to play age of empires and in mobile games there is a league of legends i don't know have you played so these were some of my favorite games and you should not play right now it is your exam time but i'm just saying so when you play these video games have you noticed the laptop becomes very hot so what happens so why the things become very hot <laughs> yeah your it's your exam time right but after your exams you have all the freedom in your life i think you will have the 3 months approximately correct after the exams so in those 3 months you can play lot of games not now <laughs> okay you see here the electrons they are flowing they are moving so when the electrons flow when the electrons move what happens this electron will collide it will collide with another atom or it will collide with another another electron what about class 11 syllabus yeah don't worry about class 11 syllabus just after your 10th grade exam just have a peace like go somewhere for a vacation for a month and relax then think about grade 11 don't start quickly you need re some relaxation after your board exams but not before that don't relax before your final exams so there is a collision and there is a friction this collision and friction of the electron with the atoms and other electron that is the reason for the heat that is produced let's study now yes so this is the heating this is called as heating effect of electric current so now it is nothing but dissipation so heat is released in the in that particular instrument for example we are using oven so heat is released there that is meaning of dissipation of electrical energy so electrical energy get converted into heat why do not gets empty so they just move right you know the circuit there is a circuit if i close this then the electrons will start flowing correct and they will return back to the battery so we are not consuming the electrons there is a very bad notion and nobody clarify even i i used to think that electrons like when we turn on the light we consume the electrons that is wrong we do not consume electrons what we consume is the electrical energy that is produced at the power station which comes to our houses and we use this electrical energy okay nice so now there is a joule's law of heating so what is joule's law joule is the name of a scientist we use a symbol j j right that is joules symbol for si unit of energy correct so this person or this scientist he gave a law he did, wherever you see a law this word that means it is from the experiment so this scientist he did lot of experiments with electrical circuits 
and he came up with the law. So what is this law? He said the power produced in a resistor. For example, there is a resistor. If you measure, if you calculate the power produced, this is directly proportional to square of the current. So whatever current is flowing through this circuit, heat produced is directly proportional to the square of the current. And when it is proportional? For a given R. As long as the resistance is constant, heat is directly proportional to I square. Where am I from? I am from Pune. Like born and brought up in Pune. Okay. So now H is directly proportional to R. So as long as we are maintaining the current constant, so current flowing through the circuit is constant. Then the heat produced is directly proportional to the resistance. And the third one, heat is proportional to time. This is obvious, right? Last one. So if let's say, uh, I'm, you turn on the light. So we use the electricity. That means light, uh, it will consume the electrical energy. So that heat produced, that means we are converting electrical energy into heat, will be directly proportional to time. So you turn on the light for longer time, you consume more energy. So more heat would be produced. Understood? So now you can combine these three equations. So what you will get? H is directly proportional to I square R T. There is not equality. This is proportionality. You can convert it into equality. So H is equal to some K times I square R T. So what this joule, the scientist, he found out that this K is equal to 1. Or he defined the heat such that the K becomes 1. And you get the equation as H is equal to I square R T. There is a final equation. So this might come in your exam. State the Joule's law of heating. So you have to write these three sentences or these three equations and then combine them to write this equation. This has come in your past exams for two marks. State the Joule's law of heating. Okay. You're done with your syllabus. Awesome. Great. So now it's time to revise. Okay. Solve this question. Everyone. Great. Yeah, some of you have done that is nice so if you are done with your syllabus you should solve all the questions and there is a sample paper i don't know whether you have seen the sample paper you should check try to find as many previous year sample papers as possible and try to solve for each subject not just for science but for every subject get at least four or five different papers previous year papers and solve it within that duration, like set a timer, let's say, where is your exam time from 10 to 1, right? So set a timer at a proper exam time, start and end, and you should finish before the time, at least 15 minutes before the exam time. So let's solve this question. Current of 1 ampere is passing through the heater, coil produces heat of 500 joules. So current is 1 ampere, heat produces 500 joules every second. So that means T is equal to 1 second. If the current is doubled, so if I double the current, so now this I2 is let's say 2 amperes. This is I1 H1. Correct? Time will be st still the same because heat produced every second. So T is still the same. So what is H2? That you have to calculate. So how will you solve this? We know H is equal to I square R T. From this equation, you can calculate the resistance of the heater coil. So how will you calculate? So H is given as 500. I square, what is I? It is 1. So 1 square multiplied by R multiplied by 1. Time is 1, correct? So from this equation, will get resistance is equal to 500 ohms. There is a resistance value. So now use it here. So H2 that is the 
heat in the when the current is doubled. So substitute everything. H2 is again I2 square RT. So now R is same because it is the same coil. Time is again same because every second. Correct? So substitute everything. I is 2 ampere. So 2 square into resistance is 500. Time is 1. 2 square is 4. 4 multiplied by 500 is 2000. This would be in joules. So the correct answer is option number D. Yes, nice. John Willen, correct. Great. Let's go to the next question or Okay, now we are going to learn about some applications of the heating effect of electric current. Okay, let's understand a couple of ap applications. You see this? What is this? This is an electric bulb. Yes. So what happens? You see the filament here? This is a filament here, this one. So the current is passed through this. So current will flow through these wires and through this filament. So what happens when the current flows through this filament, there is a electric current, then there is a heat through the filament, it produces the heat. And because of this heat, the temperature of the filament is increased. It increased to th more than 1000 degrees. Correct. And because of that, it start to radiate light. How? Something like this. You see, the filament here is very hot and it will start to radiate light. Weak in physics? Okay. Okay, no worries. It's not that difficult. Just focus on the basics. Physics is very easy if you focus on basics. Okay. Temperature, temperature of this wire will be greater than 1000 degrees. That's what I said. So, you cannot use any, any filament, right? Because let's uh, suppose if you use something like aluminum, then if the temperature is above 1000, it might melt. So, we need to choose proper element for the filament. So, what we use? We use tungsten. Why we use tungsten? Because the melting point is 3000 or above 3000 degrees. So, if you use a tungsten metal for this filament, it does not melt. Correct? That is the reason we use tungsten, not any common material. Then, they are thermally isolated. What is the meaning of thermally isolated? You mean this coating or the glass, so the heat should not come out. But sometimes it becomes hot, right? If you, let's say, turn on the light, turn on this bulb for, let's say, 5-10 five, five, minutes and touch. It is very hot. You shouldn't do that. Don't do that at your home. It's very hot. But still, they will try to minimize the heat loss, the maximum possible. You cannot uh, stop all of the heat, but as much as possible. So now, there is an inactive gas. So inside this, inside this, these two gases, argon and nitrogen, they are present inside this. Why inactive gas? Because this tungsten is at a very high temperature. So let's suppose if there is oxygen, what will happen? Tungsten will react with the oxygen, correct? And we don't want any reaction. We want to preserve this filament. That is the reason we use inactive gases like argon or nitrogen. Okay. So now most of the energy is wasted. Why? Because you see if you touch this, if you touch this bulb, it is very hot, right? So most of the energy is wasted in the form of heat, but only small amount converted into light. That is our useful energy. We don't want it to get hot. We want it to produce light. So some part will be converted into light and major part is lost into heat. So that is why nowadays we don't prefer to use these bulbs. We have much better bulbs. Those are LED bulbs, right? But this was used for last couple of decades. 
so it is very useful application next one electric fuse what is electric fuse you see these two have you seen any of these these are like olden times and nowadays we see this so what are these why they are used so the fuse is placed in series with the device so do, we have learned series and parallel so there is a our load there is a resistance and there is a fuse so there is a normal like a dc source so a small circuit but in our houses we have the live wire we will learn about this live wire in the magnetism chapter so what is live wire it means the current is coming from the power station from the power station here let's suppose there is a somewhere power station and from here current is coming through the live wire to our houses but before the current comes to our houses we use this fuse either this one or this one anything is okay but why do we need fuse fuse has a wire correct so when the current comes if let's say there is a some oscillation in the current if current shoots up above certain uh, let's say there are ratings for this fuse if let's say the fuse rating is 1 ampere and if the incoming current is let's say greater than 1 ampere what will happen this fuse wire will melt and once the wire melts what will happen there is no more current this is disconnected now circuit is broken so what happens you see here in this animation see this wire has broken inside the fuse why it is broken it melts why it melts because the heat produced is directly proportional to i square so if the current increase little bit the heat produced would be much higher and because of that heat release the wire melts and circuit is broken so i'll tell you the sequence current increases because of that heat dissipation that is the heat released in the fuse increases because of that temperature of the fuse increase and wire melts because of that circuit is broken now circuit breaks so you see the fuse wire melts and circuit is broken clear so now what kind of material you should use you should use a material which is easy to melt if you use a tungsten here tungsten will never break tungsten will never melt because the melting point is too high correct so we you need to use a um, that wire will melt and why there are different ratings because the material you see you can use either lead aluminum then copper iron these are the different materials that you can use for example here in the last one okay this one you see this is a aluminum wire can you see is a aluminum wire easy to break okay i'll go back again so the lead has a minimum out of all of them lead has the very low melting point so most likely either lead or the aluminum would be used as a 1 ampere and if you want a 10 ampere then probably it could be iron iron has very high melting point so even the current is until less than 9 ampere it will not melt but above 10 ampere then the iron will melt and circuit is broken okay so now solve this so we learned the applications of heating effect of current so in which of the following appliances heating effect is desirable means we want heating effect and these are multiple correct so choose all the correct options in which of the following heating effect is desirable it is electric oven we want the oven to become hot correct electric fan no we don't want fan to become hot so that is not correct for the next one electric heater yes we want heater to become hot third one electric iron yes so all a c and d these are the we want heating effect to be present there correct 
gamers yes amazing correct nice white 44 correct mr s77 all right so now there's a true or false bulbs are filled with chemically inactive gases like nitrogen and argon to prolong the life of the filament is it true or false this statement is true why it is true because let's suppose if we use some other gas for example like oxygen then oxygen will react with the filament so we want inactive gas chemically inactive which are nitrogen and argon so they do not react with the tungsten filament so we are prolonged prolonged means we want to increase the life of the filament so now what is electric power we know what is power if you want to push some object in mechanics what is power power is nothing but energy divided by time or rate of doing work work divided by time correct or in case of electric power power is nothing but heat produced divided by time there is electrical power and what is the SI unit of electric power it is watt as long as it is power it can be electric power can be mechanical power any power the SI unit is watt okay so this is also called as rate of doing work or rate at which electrical energy is consumed at what rate we are consuming the electrical energy yes correct change in work or rate of doing work so now we know heat produced is i square rt how do you know joule's law of heating correct so what is power power is h divided by t so h is i square rt so power will be i square rt divided by t so power will be i square r correct this is a one equation so now here do you know ohm's law what is ohm's law we know from the ohm's law v is equal to i r or i can write i is equal to v divided by r or i can write r is equal to v divided by i so just substitute this i and r one by one so if i substitute i is equal to v by r in this equation so p will be equal to i is v by r multiply this square multiplied by r so which will be v square divided by r square multiplied by r so one of the r will get cancelled out so we get this a power is equal to v square by r this is the second equation and let's get the third equation that is substitute for r so power is equal to i square r let's substitute for the r what is r so it is i square instead of r i'll substitute v by i yes so one of the i will get cancelled out so power is equal to v times i so there is a third equation so to summarize we have this equation there is a summary of all the three equations so this one and the same these are not very different just that sometimes you might want to use either this equation or sometimes you want to use this one sometimes this one depending on what is preferred so instead of using any random equation you can choose which equation to use yes correct nice correct about the ohms law so solve this question let's just solve in last 30 minutes let's solve as many questions as possible when we need power so uh, for example if you are using the electrical fan correct you want to sometimes put it at a number one or number two number three so what you are doing is you are changing the power at which the fan should rotate correct milan that is the electrical power so electric bulb is connected to the 220 volt generator so the potential difference or the voltage is 
टू ट्वेंटी वोल्ट एंड करंट इज जीरो पॉइंट वन जीरो पॉइंट फाइव एम्पियर्स करंट इज जीरो पॉइंट फाइव एम्पियर्स सो वट इज द पावर ऑफ द बल्ब सो वी वॉन्ट टू कैलकुलेट पावर ऑफ दिस बल्ब सो हाउ यू कैलकुलेट यू सी आई टेल यू अगेन ऑल दी डिफरेंट इक्वेशंस इधर यू कैन यूज आई स्क्वेर आर बट वॉट इज गिवन वी नो वी वी नो आई सो विच इक्वेशन विल यू प्रेफर कैन वी यूज दिस वी डोंट नो द रेजिस्टेंस राइट सो इंस्टे ऑफ दिस कैन वी यूज दिस अगेन वी डोंट नो द रेजिस्टेंस बट वी कैन यूज दिस वन P is equal to V times I, so let's use that equation. P is equal to V times I. Very simple, easy-looking equation, correct? So what is voltage? Two twenty volts multiplied by current, which is zero point five amperes. So this power will be one hundred ten watt. What is SI unit of power? Watts. So it is option number C. Correct. Nice. great next one 100 joules of heat is produced each second i'll write down the things so heat produced is 100 joules time is 1 second in a 4 ohm resistance r is given as 4 ohm find the potential difference across the resistor so we want to calculate what is the potential difference find the current passing through the resistor again calculate what is the current passing through it so now how will you calculate i'll write down the equations okay for you to do it p is equal to i square r or v square by r or v times i correct so we have resistance value we have heat value and the time value so there is a power power is nothing but h divided by time correct we know the 100 joules time is 1 second so that's how we get the power so how much is the power power is h by t which is 100 watt okay so now use these equations to solve so i can use P is equal to I square R, or P is equal to which one I can use again? We know the resistance, so I can use P is equal to V square by R, and power is hundred watt. So now just directly substitute the values and solve. You really love this channel, nice. wish to donate okay if you really like it then what you can do is you can subscribe and just spread your love that is your fees i guess okay so let's substitute all the values power is 100 watt so 100 what is current current we have to calculate so it is i square what is the resistance value 4 ohms so just put here So hundred divided by four is twenty five. Twenty five will be equal to I square. So I is equal to five amperes. Yes. And now use this equation. This one again. Power is hundred watt. Substitute it here. Hundred, which is equal to V square divided by what is the resistance? Four. Resistance is four ohms. So now this four into hundred, which is four hundred. Four hundred is equal to V square. Take the square root from both sides. So voltage is equal to twenty volts. Yes, current is five amperes, and the potential difference is twenty volts. So now can you verify the Ohm's law? R is equal to V by I. What is the potential difference? Twenty volt. I'll substitute twenty volt. What is the current? 5 ampere, 5 ampere. So 20 by 5 is 4 ohms. So that is the resistance. Can we get this back? Yes. That means we can use this equation directly and directly get the answers. 
ओके क्लियर एवरी वन ग्रेट लेट जस्ट गो टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन सो नाउ इलेक्ट्रिक बल्ब रेटेड एज दिस मच एंड हंड्रेड वैट सो दैट मीन्स द पॉवर कंज्यूम्ड इज हंड्रेड वैट वेन द वोल्टेज इज टू ट्वेंटी वोल्ट लेट्स कॉल इट एज पी वन एंड वी वन सो वेन इट इज ऑपरेटेड एट हंड्रेड एंड टेन वोल्ट सो द वोल्टेज टू इज हंड्रेड एंड टेन वोल्ट वॉट इज द पॉवर कंज्यूम्ड That is a question. So how will you solve? So what is constant here? Constant is electric bulb. Electric bulb is constant. That means the filament of electric bulb is constant. If the filament is constant, what does it con mean? It means resistance is constant. resistance do not change if you change the voltage current will change but resistance is constant so we can use the equation power is equal to v square by r resistance is constant power and voltage they will change so i'll write p1 and v1 yes so just substitute power is 100 watt 100 is equal to what is the voltage 220 square divided by r so you don't have to calculate the value of resistance you can just keep as it is r is equal to 220 square divided by 100 these many ohms you can just keep it as it is don't need to solve so now come back here so again we can use this formula which is power or here it is p2 is equal to v2 Square divided by R. So now the resistance is constant. I can use the same value here and substitute value of V two, which is this. So V two is one hundred and ten whole square, and this is a resistance value, but it is in division. So it would be multiplied by one hundred divided by two twenty whole square. Yes. So now simplify. So it is 110 multiplied by 110 multiplied by 100. This divided by 220 multiplied by 220. Correct. So this one is two, one is two. So 100 divided by four. That would be 25 watt. So the correct option is option number D. You are late. Okay. No worries. If you get some time, good evening. I am not able to see the names. Munch, good evening. If you get some time, do watch the recorded video. Okay, great. Clear. Let's go to the next question. So all this electric iron consumes one kilowatt of electric power. Operated at two twenty volts. So, what should be the rating of the fuse used to protect the device? That is a question. So, how will you solve this? You see the rating of the fuse. Rating of the fuse. It is all in amperes. What is this ampere? Ampere is a unit of electric current. Correct. So through this iron, we need to calculate how much current is required for the iron to work. We need to calculate the current. So let's write down the power consumed is one kilo watt, which is nothing but one thousand watt. Operated at 220 volts, so the potential difference is 220 volts. Yes. So using this, what we need to calculate the current, current which is required to operate this electric iron. So we can use power is equal to 
v times i what is power or current is p divided by v what is power 1000 divided by what is the voltage 220 so this will come out to be approximately can you tell me how much it is 4.5 approximately amperes this is a symbol for approximation this is not equal symbol this is an approximation symbol okay so now what is this current this is a current required to operate the electric iron so now let's suppose if we use a one ampere fuse this fuse will melt if the current is 4.5 amperes so we cannot use this one how about the next one even the 2 ampere will melt so we cannot use this now the 5 ampere and 10 ampere both of them are okay 5 and 10 they will not melt these fuse they will not melt but which one is better the better one is the one which has minimum rating should be just above the required current amount but as low as possible so it is 5 amperes correct why we shouldn't use a rating which is much larger let's suppose there is a required current which is 4.5 amperes and let's suppose current shoots and it becomes 6 ampere 6 ampere is much larger than 4.5 so what will happen if the current is 6 ampere this iron will melt or no iron will not melt but something might go wrong inside the iron it will get diffused okay so to protect the iron from the 6 ampere current we need a 5 ampere fuse the 10 ampere fuse will not be able to protect the iron from the 6 ampere current right so this is not good so the only the correct option is option number c which is 5 amperes okay so let's see if you have more questions okay i think this would be either last or second last question let's solve this which uses more energy so there is a tv set and there is a toaster so we need to do a comparison so there is a tv set and there is a toaster so we need to calculate the energy that means we need to calculate the heat generated at the tv or by the toaster why what do you mean why amazing so can you write the complete question can you make video on pascal's law pascal's law would be in chemistry right boy's law pascal's law they are in chemistry so maybe uh, if there is it is in syllabus palak ma'am might have prepared a video on it you can just have a look at it okay so now we need to calculate the heat so what is heat i'll write the equation here heat is equal to i square r t this is a equation given by the our joule's law pascal's law is in physics but in grade 12th right not in 10th so which uses more energy so there is a tv the power of the tv is given as 250 watt and in one hour so time is one hour correct so one hour is nothing but 3000 600 seconds yes and toaster is the power of the toaster is 1200 watt the toaster is used for 10 minutes so time is 10 minutes which is 10 into 60 which is 600 seconds okay we don't need this equation so there is a power given so we can directly calculate the heat we know the power is equal to heat divided by time so heat is power multiplied by time so we have to use this equation so just calculate the power 
So the heat would be power which is 250 watt multiplied by 3600. So these many joules of heat would be produced and here the heat would be 1200 multiplied by 600 these many joules. So now thing is to just calculate this 250 so I can write it is as 1000 divided by 4 into uh, 3.6 into 10 raised to 3. This 10 raised to 6, 3.6 divided by 4 is 0 0.8 or 8 into, sorry it is 9 right, not 8. 36 by 4 is 9. So it is 9 into 10 raised to 5 these many joules of heat is used. Heat produced that means this much of energy is consumed by the TV and how about the toaster it is 12 into 6 which is 72 multiplied by how many zeros 1 2 3 4 10 raised to 4 which is 7.2 into 10 raised to 5 joules. So which one is greater out of these two? The larger number is this one. So the TV use more energy, TV consumes more energy. 6 ampere fuse, okay for the last question right, you are not able to understand, okay. For here, uh, it is this one, no, which one was the last one? Yeah, in the electric iron one, you see here, this is a 4.5 ampere, so these are required current, the required current is 4.5 amperes, yes. So this much current is required for the electric iron to work. If let's say use of 1 ampere current, I mean 1 ampere rating of the fuse. So at this current, this fuse will break, it will melt. So you cannot use this fuse. How about the 2 ampere? This one also will melt, it will break, correct? These two, they will not melt at 4.5 ampere current. But this 10 ampere, the rating is too high. That means if the current is above 10 ampere, then only this will melt. But for example, something happens, there is a current fluctuation and because of that, current shoots to 6 ampere, which is much greater than the required current. 6 ampere is much greater than 4.5, correct? So we at 6 ampere, this iron will stop working. Something inside the iron might burn. So we want to avoid that. So to avoid that, we need to use a fuse which has rating just above the required current. There is a required current. So fuse rating should be just above. Okay? Bijli bill kaise banate hai? That is good question. It is not in your syllabus. But here, you see the power. So this is how we calculate. Let's suppose the rating is 250 watt multiplied by 1 hour. So that is kilowatt hour. And you convert it into, so this is nothing but joules, right? Or you can convert it into kilowatt hour. So that these are the number of units you have used. So let's suppose the bill comes in your house is 5 rupees per unit. So multiply number of units by number of rupees per unit. And that's how you get the electric bill. Okay, so now last question and I can guarantee almost all of you will fail. Before that, I'll tell you one formula and I'll ask you to solve. So last one, electric work. We have learned about electric work in the beginning of the chapter. So we define, let's suppose if there are two points A and B. So if I move a charge from A to B, correct? If the work done is W, then the potential difference V between these two is defined as potential difference is W by Q. This is how we define the potential difference. So work done is nothing but Q times W. Yes, 
there is a work done v times sorry v times q not w yes so what is the si unit of voltage it is volts and si unit of charge it is coulombs so if you multiply volt by coulomb you'll get joules okay so now last question and i want to see so you have to find odd one out i'll give you 30 seconds to solve and to check if you guys if your fundamentals are clear or not clear solve it you already passed 10 nice great awesome yusuf okay thanks okay party kare yes piyush do minute baad party kar dein nahi 5 minute baad party kar dein ha last 5 minutes option d okay so cyber hunt is saying option d all right cyber hunt option d anyone else you want to find odd one out and i told you you'll get the wrong answer option d is wrong okay so let's understand what is this joules it is a unit of energy energy or heat it is nothing but energy only right heat energy work they have all of them will have same si unit what is watt watt is the unit of power correct how are the kilowatt r this one is kilo watt r so what is kilowatt kilowatt is nothing but 1000 watt multiplied by 1 r so 1 r is so it is 1000 watt multiplied by 1 r is 3600 seconds so this will come out to be 3.6 3.6 into 10 to the power 6 watt second but what is watt into second do you know what is watt into second we know uh, heat is equal to power into time what is unit of power it is watt multiplied by unit of time which is unit of time is second so what is watt into second it is nothing but joules which is unit of heat so there is this number 3.6 10 raised to 6 joules so again this kilowatt r is unit of energy how about the last one volt ampere second so we know one equation power is equal to v times i yes so from here what is heat heat is power multiplied by time so substitute this here so it is volt current into time so what is the unit of volt it is uh, this potential difference so unit is just volt multiplied by unit of current which is ampere multiplied by unit of time which is second so what is this volt ampere second is nothing but heat that is joules so again volt ampere second this is unit of energy so which one is odd one out it is option number b which is unit of power all the other three they are unit of energy i told you you'll get this wrong i have taught the same question for almost more than thousand students and all of them got it wrong okay so that's it for today thank you so much and in the next class from monday we'll start with the most important chapter that is magnetism so if you know aapne question paper solve kiya sample question paper so in the sample question paper out of 30 questions six questions were from the magnetism chapter it is very important and we are going to start it from 
next like coming monday so do join us on monday at 4:15 sharp bye bye take care enjoy